Hey guys, welcome back to Remove Before Race and I'm sitting atop of our February long-term test car from Rigor Mercedes-Benz. This is the Mercedes-Benz X-Class as you might have seen in the first ever blog we did. Now this is a pretty weird place to be sitting in any Mercedes because they've never actually done a pickup before. And this is the first premium pickup from a luxury manufacturer as well. But the problem is, whenever you mention X-Class to anybody, the first thing you get is Nissan Navara. So let's deal with this stereotype first. Right, so before I tackle how similar or dissimilar the X-Class and the Navara are, let's take it back a little because every time a car is said to be using a chassis from another car, everybody loses their minds. But sometimes we forget which cars have actually done that and which cars have been successful in doing that. So let's think back to something like the brilliant McCann taking parts from the pretty above average Audi Q5. And then you also got things like the Cayenne and the Touareg, maybe the brilliant R8 and the Hurricane, and I don't know, F1 Mike and the AMG Project One. But yeah, there's a lot of cars that have used an okay base and they've been improved to something which has been perfect for what they were designed for. So maybe we should give the X-Class a chance and just see how much has actually changed, how much is still Nissan, and whether they've achieved whatever goal it is that Mercedes are setting for this. Right, so first of all, let's get out of the way the things that actually are similar to the Nissan. And the first thing that really annoys me, like really, really annoys me, like really, really, really annoys me. And when I put it on my story on Instagram, you guys hated it too. Let me show you first, so come closer, Chewy. Here is standard Mercedes key, all right? Let's get a nice shot of that. Standard Mercedes key, AMG crest on the, on the Mercedes key. Lovely, okay? Not the best key in the world, but it's nice. The brand new E-Class and S-Class Mercedes key and the AMG version, wonderful. Then when you buy an X-Class, the world's first premium pickup, you get this. And as you all have pointed out, this is indeed a Nissan Navara key. And if you look at them all three together now, there's a slight disconnect here. And surely this must be one of the easiest things to do when changing a car. And it's your first impression when you go to the dealership and you're spending X amount more than a Nissan, you expect to get at least this one. To be handed this, it's not really a great start to the experience. Right, now that I've had my rant about the key, which is, I think, important and needs to be addressed in any future version, let's talk about what else is from the Nissan. So there's only five exterior parts that carried over, and the only ones that you're really going to notice are door handles and that big ugly aerial at the top. Everything else has been completely reskinned by Mercedes. Every door panel, every part of the car is a Mercedes panel and it's a Mercedes design. So there's nothing that carries over. Now, when you go internally into the actual structure of the car, now the X-Class sits on the Navara's ladder chassis, but the chassis has been reinforced by Mercedes. And the main reason for this is there is actually a V6 engine coming. So there's going to be an X350D formatic, but we'll talk more about that later. So the chassis has been reinforced for the new engine, and that will of course generally help the current engines, the 220 and the 250 as well. Now, what else have they changed? One thing that changes a car completely is the track and the front and the rear axles have been widened and that is gonna change the handling of the car completely. The load area has also been lengthened so the overhang is longer and you can fit more into the back of the X-Class and one thing that's great is that the load area comes standard with LED lights across all of the trims of the X-Class, which is not common with pickup trucks. We've got steel brake discs across the entirety of the pickup, which is not common in pickups. So this is a great thing, which is basic in the X-Class. So whereas traditional pickups feature leaf spring suspension, Mercedes have installed coil springs all around the car in this. So what that basically means in layman's terms, when you've seen the old American films, the guys are bouncing around in their pickups, you're not gonna get that in the X-Class. What you'll get instead is a much more car-like firm ride and something that's a lot more usable daily. But we'll get onto that when we go on the road test. Now in terms of the design, 
The front end is exactly what you would expect from a Mercedes SUV. If you remember, we tested the E-Class All-Terrain recently, and that had pretty much the exact same front end. So the whole family of SUVs and off-road vehicles links together quite nicely. Moving on to the side, however, this is probably the most problematic part when a layman looks at the car and compares it to the Navara or any other pickup. Now, most pickups are all gonna have the exact same shape on the side, and I've compared this to the Ford Ranger, the VW Amarok, the Navara itself, and the X-Class, and they all have to conform to a certain shape because that is the shape of what a pickup is. So there's nothing too distinct on the side of the X-Class that makes you think Mercedes. And to be honest, the wheels that Mercedes have chosen for this don't really help in that regard either. If you look at the X-Class concept, the side of the car again, doesn't look too different to what this is, but the wheels help make a huge difference and imply that it is a Mercedes-Benz. So maybe this is something that can be brought into an AMG line version or something else further down the line. And finally, on the rear of the car, the X-Class has the exact same uh, LED light design as the recently unveiled 2019 Sprinter. So you see the commercial vehicles of MB all following a similar design language. This is not going to be mistaken for any other car when you look at the car from the rear. Now this is where you really get your bang for your buck with the X-Class. Immediately, even before you walk in on this, the power version of the car, you've got keyless entry. And you've also got like the Mercedes-Benz sill plates on the side. So as soon as you walk in, it's very Mercedes. So immediately when you look in front of you, you've got the steering wheel out of the GLS and the GLE, and the Speedo is straight out of the C-Class. You've got the normal Mercedes brilliant command system here, which works exactly as it does in all the other current models. It's not the system out of the new E and the S, however, but it is what you find in the C-Class. The screen sits on top of these newly designed vents, which they'll remind you of something like the A-Class, but the funny thing is, it actually suits the X more than the A because they're shaped as an X. So it's quite a nice little thing to see the X design within the dash here. And the overall shape of this front dashboard is actually quite retro looking, as Chewie was pointing out earlier. It reminds you of sort of the very flat front-faced old uh, retro car interiors, especially with this wood finish on the front. So it's actually really impressive looking, and this is one area where they've kept quite close to the concept car, which everybody loves. So as soon as you get in, it's lovely to have this modern Mercedes design with some retro elements. As you get lower down, however, the plastics start to become a bit rougher. And I suspect the reason for this is this is actually a pickup car, and there's gonna be a need to have something that's a bit more hard wearing in the lower areas of, of the footwell. But I suppose if you have a more luxurious version of the X-Class, eventually this could all be covered up with leather. Uh, this lower part here, you've actually got a, a physical gear stalk, which you don't see a lot of these days, especially in Mercedes-Benz. Normally we have the stalk up here. Um, but it's not a bad thing. I mean, this is partly a commercial vehicle. We have to remember that. So I imagine if you're going off-road, it's better to have this here than accidentally hitting the stalk up here. Equally, no paddle shifts. You have to change gear over here. You've got a physical handbrake as well, unlike the electronic ones that you're used to in Mercedes. And then you've got to match with the command system, you've got the touchpad straight out of the C-Class as well. And just everything else, the seating and the trims, it's all, the interior is completely Mercedes. That's what I'm getting at. So some of the things that I was quite surprised to find in here, as you heard in the vlog, is we've got 360 degree camera. And it's, it's such a great feature to have on a car that is so big and wide. I can't really express to you how useful it's been in the last week, me going around for either going to Sainsbury's school run, getting my Costa, whatever it might be, actually having the 360 degree camera there to tell you where the back of the car is, where the wheels are. It's immensely useful for someone who's not used to a pickup or even someone who has one. We've also got lane assist, which is something that you normally find in much higher end Mercedes. And I don't really think you'll see a lot of that in other pickups as well. To summarize about the interior, the best thing and the one that hits you home the most is as someone who is used to a modern Mercedes, you will jump into this and you'll be at home. You don't need a handover, you don't need to look at the instruction manual. It is a Mercedes Benz and you don't think anything else when you walk into here. So it's very user friendly, you just jump in, push the start button and you're away. Now that we've dealt with the misconceptions, the design and that entire topic that seems to dominate the X-Class, Let's talk about where it is actually really, really good as a pickup, and that is on the drive itself. 
I've got to say, a pickup truck is not something I thought I'd be uh, reviewing on Remove Before Race. But I guess this might be the first of many in, in a luxury pickup segment, if more... I mean, v, the VW Amarok is really the main rival to the X-Class at the moment in terms of a premium manufacturer making a pickup. But I suspect competition's got to hot up. Now, what is this X250 diesel like? It's worth noting, first of all, that the engine comes from the Nissan Navara, but just because it's from the Nissan Navara doesn't mean it's a bad thing, and there's too much brand snobbery. I mean, Nissan make really good cars, and I can't remember where it was voted, but the, but the Navara was voted the best pickup of uh, the last year. Now, that Navara engine has been tweaked and tuned by Mercedes, as has the gearbox, which is actually really responsive. So this is a really good base for Mercedes to start on, and this engine never feels lacking. It always seems to have just enough power that you need in any circumstance, which is exactly what you need out of a car engine. So when I'm doing daily stuff, like going through A and B roads here or through town, it's, it's perfect, it's got good acceleration. Now motorway driving as well, when you're overtaking and you need more power, the engine doesn't seem lacking, which is great. But I do wonder what the 220 will be like. From what I've read in other reviews, it's a little bit lacking. Uh, the 220 comes with the six-speed manual as well. And from what I've seen of this box, it's brilliant. So I suspect the 250D with the auto box is the one to go for. One thing I find really amazing, listen to this. It's so quiet. The sound deadening is just brilliant. And you don't expect that from this class of car. But coming mid of this year will be the X350 diesel, which will be a V6 Mercedes engine, 255 brake horsepower, much more torque. And that is gonna be a really exciting car because it's gonna be all the time four wheel drive. So that's gonna be much more comparable to something like a GLS or a GLE. And with that V6 Mercedes engine, that is surely gonna be the X class to have. Power is good, as I said, that's the engine at full pelt now. Can't really hear anything, which is great. It's what you want from a Mercedes that is a pickup. Now we've moved away from the typical pickup leaf spring suspension, and now we're on coilovers. And yeah, I think widening the track has really helped with the cornering stability of this car. Uh, having the front and rear axles wider, it just works wonders for the, uh, for the handling. I came into this, I'll be honest, expecting the car to sort of wallow and bellow and, and act something like a larger sprinter or, or something like the G-Wagon. If any of you have driven it, you know, it feels like a death trap the first time you drive it because you turn the wheel and nothing happens. Um, but this, it handles really car-like and it really does almost feel like an alternate GLE. But that being said, as you can probably see, by the shaking at the moment it is quite a rough ride i guess the best way that i could make petrol heads understand is if you took something like an m3 or a or a gle 63 and you switch the suspension onto sport plus on british roads that's sort of what you're feeling there's no suspension options here it's just as is and you get that kind of feel of every inch of the road if you like now that's something that might actually come quite useful in off-roading, but we're not doing anything like that today. Now it would be quite interesting if Mercedes actually made an even more luxurious version of this, or perhaps a more sporty one. I would love to see an AMG line more on the lines of the concept car that they showed with that massive front uh, mouth of the car. You, you had the single bar grille, the big fat air intakes on the front. It looked really, really impressive. and obviously the bigger wheels and with the uh, AMG design just set the whole whole pickup off. Um, I'm still crossing my fingers hoping that a version like that eventually rears its head. Um, I actually did a render on Instagram which a lot of you might remember. It was my most liked photo of last year. I think it was 23,000 likes or something crazy like that and it was of an X63, uh, an AMG X63 that I rendered uh, taking parts from various other uh, AMG SUVs and uh, that garnered a lot of interest and I was thinking the more ridiculous an SUV performance car is the better it tends to do in this regard so I wouldn't be surprised if eventually maybe as a final hurrah 
maybe AMG get their hands on this and make something completely crazy like the G63 6x6. Uh, I think that would be amazing. Uh, it'd be a really cool one-off car. The only question is whether, I know with the V6, I think they've had to modify the uh, front a bit in order to actually get the V6 engine in. So whether that's, it's possible to even get an AMG V8 in, I don't know. But I suppose we can dream, maybe in a, in a future X-Class or something. I think it'd be really cool to have just a crazy performance version. Something to rival the, the really cool American performance pickups. This car will do exceedingly well when you have someone who's coming out of, say, a BMW, an Audi, a Mercedes, or any other of the luxury premium brands, and they're wanting something for work, for utility purposes, that is more luxurious than your average pickup. This car is really going to hit the spot for that kind of customer, and I think that's where Mercedes are aiming this car for. And people are not price sensitive on a luxury product. They're just not. That's why we all don't drive the same thing. It's why you have low-level phones and high-level smart smartphones. People are not price sensitive. It's really for someone who's looking for quality and luxury inside a segment where you don't really associate quality and luxury with. But it still goes about the business of being a proper pickup truck. It's got the same, if not a little bit more load space than the Navara. It's got as much towing capacity, so 3.5 tons but it's got the added benefit of being pretty much a proper Mercedes-Benz. Someone who wants a luxury pickup will now consider an X-Class as a viable alternate to something like an Amarok, a car where you can actually personalize the interior and have saddle brown interior and different types of trims. This is not normal stuff for pickups. So guys, I hope you found that informative. If you're uh, looking to purchase an X-Class or just curious as to uh, what Mercedes have built, um, it's been great fun getting into something a bit different than the usual performance cars that we look at. Uh, and certainly this is like a, uh, a new niche being built and I'm not against niches at all. I think the more, the better. As long as production can be satisfied, bring on the niches. I'm really excited to try the X350D when it's out later this year. I think as good as it's been driving this 250D, I think that's really gonna be the one to have with the formatic system and, and 255 brake horsepower. That will be a really, really cool pickup. Also, a big thank you to Rigor Mercedes-Benz of Heathrow for uh, giving us this car as a long-term test car. The X-Class isn't readily available in your usual Mercedes-Benz retailers because it is a commercial vehicle. So I've left a link for Rigor down below, so get in touch with them and they should be able to get you a test drive or get you an order. It's a shame that there's so much brand snobbery and there's a lack of understanding as to what brands do when they take a chassis and they modify it and designers go about the job of, of making new designs. It's a shame, but hopefully now you understand that this is a car in its own right, set, set apart from the Nissan, and I hope it was informative in that regard. So uh, thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe, and uh, we'll see you again soon. And in a lot of ways, because it's been designed later, it, it looks a lot nicer than the... Who is that in the car? <laughs> Not in my car, bro. The biggest mistake you can ever do is give me the car keys back. What do you think I'm going to do? <laughs> <laughs> Max, let's just go! Ooh. Green car? Green car? Green car? <laughs> when you're in love with a beautiful car Aww, aww Look, he's scratching the car up Thank <laughs> you.